When you talk about the cover image of the show today, when you talk about the cover image of the show, the cover image of the show today is relating to an amazing, an amazing, an amazing, an amazing and sensational TV series called Show Trial. There's two seasons of it out at the moment. I watched two of them back to back and they're just amazing. And I want to recommend to all of you to watch it. Please do watch it. So Show Trial, as you can tell by the name, is effectively a TV show centered around trials of people who have committed crimes, but the it's not what it always seems. There's always a little bit more of a layer to it. So it basically follows a bunch of people. So by the way, this is a BBC drama. It's really flipping well done. It follows a bunch of people at the same time. It follows like the person that committed a crime, the defense, his family members, maybe police officers, journalists, other people. Like at the same time, you've got these weaving narratives and storylines coming together and it's put in it and they tie it together at the end perfectly. And I think it's only like five episodes or six episodes per series or per season because we do we do series here in the UK for some reason. Even though it's called TV series, we do whatever. Cool. So there's only two seasons of it out at the moment and legit. It's amazing. I might have to say season two might be better than season one. I'm not going to lie. Maybe because it's topical. Because on season two, it revolves around a police officer who, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, kills somebody. Right? So that's where the kind of centers around. And this police officer is clearly like a bad police officer. But the lawyer has to represent him, even though he knows he's, he's, his client's guilty. He has to still represent him. Um, and obviously, you know, there's this whole kind of adage of like, oh, innocent to proven guilty, blah, 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 blah. And, but the real strong part of this whole series are the actors and their ability to come across legit and also to cut to like be able to display these very this range of emotions like the like the lawyer person again spoil alert um unfortunately is going through a bit of a depressive state they're a little bit bipolar they're also suffering from sleep apnea no sleep apnea what's that thing called um where they stay up late they stay up all the time and they can't sleep i've got a term of it because unfortunately in the series the lawyer's wife had committed suicide before the series starts so he's still trying to kind of overcome and go through that, that or not overcome but he's trying to handle um that trauma right that's it insomnia big up coiler sorry the, the guy this lawyer is suffering from insomnia big up coiler big up coiler so it kind of goes through that narrative it kind of goes through that storyline so much so it gets to a point where the lawyer goes in the dark net and tries to order himself some xanax because he's struggling so hard so much to sleep but obviously he then you know oddly enough becomes dependent on it and has to go through withdrawals trying to get off it like it's crazy like so much stuff happens at the same time but the main star has to be the guy that plays the police officer he's fucking phenomenal how he's able to play someone who's quite clearly evil right um quite clearly evil in like the cersei lannister way at the game of thrones but still is because that's why, that's why I think Cersei Lannister or Game of Thrones in general was expertly written. Because although Cersei Lannister was downright evil and you wanted to root against her, she also had some redeemable traits. There also was some flashes of humanity and stuff that made you that made you feel conflicted. Or like, oh, shit. I, should, I know I should hate this woman. But uh, 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 uh. same goes for this character in Flipping Show Trial Season 2, the police officer who, spoiler alert, kills somebody. It's fantastic. I'm not going to give you too much details because I've already given you too much. But if you haven't watched it, I please, I implore you to watch it. It's absolutely fantastic. Legit fantastic. And to give you a better overview because I'm blabbering and waffling and I'm interpreting it in my flipping, you know, hood language way. Here's a write-up courtesy of The Guardian where they basically speak about the series a bit more. So let's see what they say and how they review it. But And again, The Guardian, you know, they're a little bit particular with their taste. But even The Guardian had to give it three stars. I'd give it four personally maybe i'll give it even five because it's a bbc series like f f to be this good is fucking crazy this i think is on the standard of like a hbo series this could have easily been a hbo level quality series it's fucking phenomenal personally i think so but let's continue with the um review here courtesy of the guardian courtesy of a writer called rebecca Nich nicholson show trial season two this outrageous legal drama sucks you right back in or straight back in despite its staffness i was fond of the first series of show trial which took the death of a working class student at a posh university and used it to explore themes of privilege justice and british legal system viewers liked it too it was brash popular sunday night fair an airport novel of a tv series that um pirouetted around credibility 
yet dragged you in in this relentless twist. It returns to a second star of your season with similarly over-the-top sensibilities and yet again I have been sucked in despite the nagging presence of a familiarly raised eyebrow during last sections of each of the five episodes. No, I, I didn't raise my eyebrow. I was, uh, I was gripped. To be fair, I'm easily entertained anyway, but I was gripped. I was thoroughly gripped from the beginning to the end. It continues. This time it has dipped into the grab bag of headlines come up with a story about the tactics of a climate activism offensive police whatsapp groups chats and online conspiracy theories it may leave the impression that it's spinning too many plates but the plot is captivating once again touches on the class tensions within british society moving through moving from bristol to brighton it examines the legal process behind the newsworthy murder charge this time thrown at a serving police officer dragging the audience into yet another us and them upstairs downstairs scenario you know i also liked about it too because it focuses on places outside of london you know i loved about it that i kind of miss that you don't get in london i miss the neighborhood gossip side of it that's something that you always get whenever you go to like like whenever i've visited places outside of london and you go to like a bar or a pub even if you're not illegit even if you landed there the same day usually because they want to chat to you anyway but you usually find out while going about the town if you get if you get drinking someone's gonna some woman will sit by you Oh, should give you the lowdown on what happened with this. Especially if you mention a story. Maybe you're there and you, I don't know, because I'm curious, I might be browsing the local news of Bristol or Brighton or whatever before I go there. And when you rock up and say, oh, yes, what happened to that? What was the vibe like with this, with this missing? Or that, 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 that. Suddenly they'll have so, so much to say. Oh, I heard this building got knocked down. They'll start sharing you with loads of information. And you start to find out so much stuff about people in local towns. So that must be such a cool thing about living in a smaller town. Because, you know, there's not many people there. You end up kind of just sharing all information and news on each other. Like, I, I kind of like that aspect of the show. I thought it was really charming. It continues. Marcus Calderwood, Barney Fiswick is a wealthy founder of activist group Stop Climate Genocide, which has made um, many enemies with a roadblock in protest. Calderwood is knocked off his bicycle and left to die in a ditch. As he breathes his last breath, he manages to issue a dying statement to the, a par paramedic, naming a police officer as a man who deliberately ran him off the road. Michael Sosha plays the blinder as PC Justin Mitchell. Yeah, by the way, Michael, Michael Shoka, is that his name? Michael Shoka absolutely killed it as PC Justin Mitchell. Killed it. As the evil policeman that also has some redeeming qualities, killed it. But he sure has done a lot of things that suggest that he's something to hide. Mitchell is arrogant, charismatic, crucially an insider who understands the system, having experienced it on the front line. He runs rings around superior officers who question him and is surprisingly chipper considering the enormous amount of circumstantial evidence pointing the finger in his direction. By the way, I'm going to leave it there because it's already spoiled quite a bit of the show. So if you're going to watch it, I'm going to leave it there because the, the review does spoil quite a bit of it. But honestly, she smashed it. She got it. She knows the show is fucking fantastic. I absolutely loved every part of it. I was gripped from the beginning to the end. And I recommend if you're a fan of police, trial, you know, corruption, thriller type drama series, and you're looking for something to watch, I recommend you try and find it. Obviously, if you live in the UK, it's available for free-ish on BBC iPlayer. But if you don't, then I'm sure you know how to find it. You have your ways, you have your resources. Try it, find it, show trial, season one and season two. Piesa Resistance, amazing TV. I was thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly entertained. Yes, entertained. You guessed it, entertained. Who would have guessed it, entertained?